Hello, in this one I'm going to give you some examples of limit points, boundary points, open and closed sets, and topology. I will stick only to pictures to make things just intuitively understandable. So take a look at the following situation. Imagine that we have this big set. So what I'm calling the big set is that big egg looking shape. It's a set. Now in this particular case, to be more specific, you can imagine it's just a collection of points in two dimensional space. Look at these points and let's ask some basic questions. Which one is a limit point and which is not? We'll just apply the definition in a somewhat intuitive way. So focus on this point right here. That means the blue point below me. You see, if you draw that big blue circle around it first, never mind the green one, then you could place within that that yellow point. And then that yellow point would essentially represent the intersection between the big set and the blue circle. In other words, there's something in the intersection between them, you see? Okay, but then imagine you do this. You shrink the blue circle so it kind of like turns into the size of the green circle. And you can still place, as you can see, a point that is both within the green circle and the entire set. Now, these circles that you see shrinking around the blue point, those are called the neighborhoods of the point. The only point that really matters is, even if I do this again, take a look, like I shrink this even more. So imagine that the green circle shrinks down to like a super, super tight circle around the blue point. You could still put another point in there. That would be in the intersection of that super tiny circle and the entire big set. So when you have that, we call that essentially a limit point. I can't visualize it here because it would be like microscopic. Okay, so that is a limit point. Now look at this one on the boundary here. It's pretty much the same concept, right? So we have this blue point, and notice that first, if you just build around it, this blue circle, then that yellow point can be placed so that it basically represents a point or an element of intersection between the blue circle and the entire set on the inside here. You see that? And then what you can do, of course, is you can shrink the blue circle so it kind of looks more like the green circle after that. And you can still place a point right here, the green point, that is within this intersection. And if you wanted to, you could make a smaller circle, circle still and stick in a very tiny looking point. In other words, this blue point then would be a limit point. You can get as close to it pretty much as you want, you see? Regardless of how tight the circle around it is, there are always points in there that pretty much represent the intersection with the big set. That's an intuitive way to think about it. All right, let's take a look at some other ones here. Now, look at this one all the way here. This blue point in this position. Well, if you just forget about the green circle for now and just focus on the blue circle, it's true that, for example, like this yellow point below me, that would be an in intersection of our big set, which is where I am now, <laughs> and that big circle. It would be an in intersection of the two. But then this happens. Imagine that you take the big circle and you kind of shrink it down to a little circle around the blue point. And in that case, that might, for example, enable you to draw that green point. But there's an issue. Clearly, that green point is only in the area around the blue point. That green point is not also located in the set where I am located right now. So the conclusion based on that is the blue point is not a limit point, as you can see. Let's take a look. I think there's another example like this one here. Same principle. So begin with the blue point. Put that down first. At first, you might draw a huge blue circle that might, for example, contain the yellow point as an element of the intersection of the blue circle, essentially, and the big set, kind of where I am located. But then you let that shrink, so it kind of becomes eventually the green circle. And in that case, if you should draw a point, like the green point below me, notice that it's only close to the blue point. It's only contained within the green circle, but it's not anymore. It's not in the big set. You see that? So you would say that the blue point is not a limit point for that reason. That's some of the intuition behind limit points. All right, let's move on. So we've gone over limit points. Next concept would be basically that of a boundary point. So to understand boundary points intuitively, let's take a look at some pictures. It's always the best thing to do, okay? Take a look at this point right here, this blue point in this position. There's something special about it. So it's here, and notice that first just focus on that big blue circle. You see that 
you can place a yellow point that is outside the set, and within that same circle, you can also have this green point that represents the intersection of our set, where I am, and the circle. And notice, imagine then you then take that big circle and you shrink it to the size of the green circle, and you observe that still it's the case that you have a green point which is part of our, our set. You also have now that new yellow point which is still part of the exterior of the set. And in fact, it doesn't matter how much you shrink the circle here, you very likely would always be able to draw a point inside the set and outside the set. For that reason, blue, that blue point, is what we describe as a boundary point. It contains points, in other words, both inside the set and outside the set, regardless of like the size of the little circle or open neighborhood that you draw around it. Same principle applies, for example, at C. Look at this one here. Now, this blue point is not a boundary point, and the reason is this. Take a look. So I'm focusing on the blue point as the center of everything. At first, if I draw this giant circle around it, the way this is done here, then you see I could like choose this green point here that is clearly an intersection of the big circle here and our original big set that we can't even see completely. And I also have a yellow point that is part of the blue circle, but it's in the exterior of the set. But then something happens. Take a look. And remember, the blue point is the center. I shrink everything down to the level of, for example, just that green little open circle. And then what I can do is I can put, for example, this yellow point here and that green point here. But what's fundamentally different, though, is that now, notice that both of the yellow and the blue and the green points are all outside our set. In other words, this neighborhood around the blue point does not contain any points that are coming from the original set, where I'm kind of located right now. So we say that the blue point is definitely not a boundary point. I can kind of also tell it just by looking at it, right, that it's not on the boundary. Okay, let's take a look. I think I have some additional examples. So this one would be considered a boundary point because you have the big circle, it contains a yellow point and a green point. You shrink it down. Regardless of the size, you will still have the case that you have a point from the inside and a point from the outside. So the blue point is a boundary point. All right. And then this one is not a boundary point because you have the blue circle. At first, you have a green point and a yellow point. But then as you shrink that blue circle towards the green circle, you see that eventually around the blue point, you have only the yellow and the green, uh, but they're both contained within the interior of our set. And there's nothing shared with the outside. So for that reason, you would say that the blue point here is not a boundary point. Okay, let's take a look. Let's talk about the concept of a closed set next. So again, just a lot of pictures. Take a look at this right here. A closed set is defined roughly as something that contains all of its limit points. So what does that mean? Look, look at this point on the boundary here, you see? You have the blue circle and the green circle. And notice that as the blue shrinks towards the green, first you have basically the yellow point, which uh, represents the intersection of the blue circle with the interior, so to speak, of the big set. But if you make the circle smaller, it's still again the case that you can find a point of intersection between the green circle and the inside of our big set. That's represented by, for example, just one dot here. Now, in reality, you kind of could imagine that it's more than that, like shade in this area to fill it in. But this gets the idea across. Now, remember, a closed set contains all of its limits points. So now, let's take a look at some other ones here, you see? It doesn't really matter which one I choose. Look at this one. Again, it's on the boundary. Notice that when I go over from the blue to the green circle, the green circle... I'm sorry, the blue circle first contains the yellow point and then it contains the green point as it shrinks down towards the green circle. And even if I took a very, very tiny neighborhood around the blue point, I would still be able to find a point that would be essentially representing the intersection of the circle and the interior of the set, you see? So it's a limit point, in other words. And I could repeat that kind of analysis for this point also. And let's see here, let me zoom out. I could repeat that kind of analysis for this point also. So as you can see, we would say that this is a closed set. It basically contains all of its limit points. Let's take a look at the next concept. Let's look at the concept now of an open set. Well, that's different. First of all, 
he look at this circle here. So I have a point in the middle. And notice that basically what I'm allowed to do when a set is open is draw a neighborhood around the point pretty much of any size, even if it becomes like virtually microscopic. And that's what I have happening here. You see the, the blue point is in the middle, well, the green point. And then I have two neighborhoods and kind of like they shrink towards the point. And I'm allowed to do that when a set is open. So there's always a kind of little neighborhood that you can draw around it. Let's go over to the boundary because uh, boundaries are often represented as dashed line segments or dashed lines when you talk about open sets to indicate that nothing from here is included as part of the set. Take a look over here. Imagine at first I have my point is very close to the boundary and then I have this big giant circle. Now at first when you do that, that circle might contain points both on the inside but also on the outside clearly. Well, guess what? I can just choose a different size circle around the blue point where that is eliminated. For example, like the green circle in this position, you see? And then I am completely within the set. Same thing happens over here, you see? I have a point, giant first kind of neighborhood around it in blue, but then I can shrink it down to make a tiny little neighborhood around it. And the point is that notice, regardless almost of how close I am to the boundary, I can do that. Put a little neighborhood around the point okay let me see look at this one right here so this is a point it's very close to the boundary but i have a super tiny neighborhood around it and even if that blue point moved closer to the boundary here i could still shrink my little neighborhood around it and everything would still fit within the set and i also have another point over here same principle applies you see i have a point it's very close to the boundary it's okay because the set is open, essentially what I can do is just construct a little neighborhood around it, regardless of basically how close it is to the boundary. The last thing would be to talk about the concept that's somewhat unusual of a clopen set. So, notice first of all, when I talk about clopen, I'm going to talk about R2, which means basically the entire like XY coordinate plane. And look at this. Look at all these points, like this point right here. You see this point? Below me can be enclosed pretty much in any little neighborhood that I want, right? And then also, let's see, this point right here can be enclosed in a big neighborhood, smaller neighborhood. I could shrink it down and make it very tight around the point. Same thing with this one right here. I could shrink it down and make it very tight around the point. Let's see here. Let me zoom out. So what is this telling us? What it's telling us is that it's, this set is open. So R2 is an open set. But is it also closed? Well, it is cl also closed, which is quite strange, because it does contain all of its limit points. Well, take a look. Here's an example of a limit point right here. You see this? You see, first you have that blue neighborhood around the blue point, and you have the green neighborhood around it. And notice that, for example, if I just focus on the blue neighborhood, I can put a dot in there, and that dot represents the intersection of the blue circle and the entire R2 set. Or if I want, I can shrink it. And now that green circle contains that green point, which represents the intersection of the green circle with the entire R2 space. So this kind of set that has this weird characteristic is what we call the clopen set. It's both closed and open at the same time. In other words, any point is basically what we call an interior point. It's always on the inside. But at the same time, it contains all of its limit points because there is no outside, essentially, not to contain them, you see? <laughs> okay, that's it for this one. I hope it's been somewhat insightful. I'll see you in another one.